a powerful storm is bearing down on the west coast and bringing with it a scary sounding weather term. That term is bomb cyclone. Bomb cyclone is a term used by weather enthusiasts to describe a process that meteorologists usually call bombogenesis. It's the rapid intensification of a cyclone in a short period of time, and it can happen during powerful storms such as the one Northern California and the Pacific Northwest are preparing for this week. The National Weather Service Weather Prediction Center has issued excessive rainfall risks starting Tuesday and running through Friday because of the powerful storm expected in Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. The storm is arriving as the region experiences an atmospheric river, which is a long plume of moisture, over the Pacific Ocean. The Weather Prediction Center said the storm intensified swiftly enough that it's considered a bomb cyclone. Bomb cyclones can happen in many places, and aren't unique to the West Coast. They can occur in several parts of the world's oceans, including the Northwest Pacific and North Atlantic. We have a technical definition for it, and that's when a low pressure system rapidly intensifies by 24 millibars in 24 hours. There. But really what we're describing is a low pressure system or a storm that's going under rapid intensification. Well, a hurricane is formed a little bit differently. Those storms also go undergo rapid intensification, but usually the term bomb cyclone does not refer to a hurricane. Uh, it could be a snowstorm, however, and uh, we do actually most frequently see these in the winter. So they are frequently snowstorms as well. There's a number of factors that are involved uh, with any storm system to make it a bomb cyclone, but really uh, the most frequent thing that we see is when we have uh, some stronger cold air being pulled into a warmer system. Usually they're going to be associated with a lot of weather you know, heavy rainfall, heavy snowfall, um, and certainly high gusty winds, um, possibly up to, you know, up to hurricane strength winds. I mean, we're seeing wind gusts near the coast or off the coast of the Pacific Northwest right now, up into the 90, 90 mile per hour wind gusts. Um, and they are expecting um, high wind gusts, especially in some of the higher terrain um, further inland as well. It's going to bring some significant um, precipitation to portions of Northern California. We're talking rainfall totals 10 to 20 inches possible with feet of snow, several feet of snow in the highest terrain. Uh, this is going to result in, likely to result in significant flash flooding and landslides. Germany's foreign minister vowed on Tuesday that her country would not be intimidated by Russia's new nuclear deterrent policy, saying Berlin made that mistake in the past but would not repeat it. Annalena Baerbock told a news conference in Poland that Berlin will now heed the warnings of partners that border Ukraine. She was attending a meeting of foreign ministers of Poland, Germany, France and Italy. Putin is playing with our fear, 
Baerbach said. He didn't just start doing this 1000 days ago. He started back in 2014. And Germany in particular made the mistake back then, especially politically, of allowing itself to be intimidated by this fear and, above all, not listening to its partners, especially our Eastern European partners, who made it clear at the time, we must not rely on promises from the Kremlin. We must invest in our own security and protection. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday signed a revised nuclear doctrine declaring that a conventional attack on Russia by any nation that is supported by a nuclear power will be considered a joint attack on his country. It follows US President Joe Biden's decision to let Ukraine strike targets inside Russia with US-supplied longer-range missiles. The foreign ministers meeting in Warsaw on Tuesday were discussing stepping up Europe's military support for Ukraine as well as ties with the United States under Donald Trump. Putin spielt mit unserer Angst. Das hat er nicht erst vor 1000 Tagen begonnen, sondern das hat er schon 2014 begonnen. Und gerade in Deutschland hat man damals, vor allen Dingen politisch, den Fehler gemacht, sich von dieser Angst einschüchtern zu lassen und vor allen Dingen nicht auf seine Partner, insbesondere unsere osteuropäischen Partner, zu hören, die damals schon deutlich gemacht haben, wir dürfen uns nicht auf Versprechungen aus dem Kreml verlassen, sondern wir müssen selber in unsere Sicherheit und unseren Schutz investieren. Wir erleben zugleich, dass diese Einschüchterungsversuche hybrid sind. Auch davor haben uns die direkten Nachbarn vorher schon gewarnt. Wir erleben das mittlerweile auch in Deutschland, sozusagen geografisch im Herz der Europäischen Union. Mit Cyberangriffen, mit Beobachtung und Ausspähen von kritischer Infrastruktur plötzlich explodieren Pakete, die eigentlich in Flugzeuge transportiert werden sollen. Und gestern, wie Sie angesprochen haben, ist ein äh, Datenkabel zwischen Finnland und, Schwe äh, Finnland und Deutschland und wahrscheinlich auch noch betroffen äh, Schweden kaputt gegangen. Das können alles nicht einfach nur Zufälle sein sondern es gilt eben jeden Tag immer wieder auch in unseren Gesellschaften deutlich zu machen. Wenn Putin davon spricht, dass dieser Angriff nicht nur der Ukraine gilt, sondern der europäischen Demokratie, dass wir jeden Tag für diese europäische Demokratie einstehen, bei der Unterstützung der Ukraine, bei dem Schutz unserer eigenen europäischen kritischen Infrastruktur, bei der Verteidigung unserer europäischen Freiheit. Und die hybride Kriegsführung Putins bedeutet, Europa zu spalten. Er hat vor tausend Tagen gehofft, weil wir vorher doch auch manchmal etwas zerstritten waren, dass wir keine gemeinsame Antwort auf diese Vollinvasion, auf den Angriffskrieg finden. Er hat sich bitter getäuscht.